Prabha Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janabalabha Girid Bharadhari Gopi Janabalabha Girid Bharadhari Yashodanandana Braja Janaranjana Yashodanandana Braja Janaranjana Yamunatira Vanachari Yamunatira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Balabha Girid Bharadhari Gopi Jana Balabha Girid Bharadhari Yashoda Nandana Praja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Praja Janaranjana Yamunatira Vanachari Yamunatira Vanachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Premanande Haribo Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we're continuing the prayers by Queen Kunti. This is the eighth prayer offered by Queen Kunti. Vipada Shantuta Shasvat Tatra Tatra Jagad Guru Bhavato Darshanam Yajad Apunar Baba Darshana. Translation I wish that all those calamities would happen again and again so that we could see you again and again. For seeing you means we will no longer see repeated births and deaths. So, uh, this is from Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter 8, text 25. So Queen Kunti is welcoming calamities. Of course, she's a very great devotee. So one may say, well, that's all right for Queen Kunti. She's a very... She is a very special devotee, very, you know, that she can be the aunt of Lord Krishna. So she can welcome calamities. And Srila Prabhupada writes there that, he says that if we are able to remember Krishna by these calamities, then certainly we welcome them. Now who is able to remember Krishna? That requires, we should be pious, we should have some piety. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes how four kinds of people will come to him. Chatur Vidabhajantimam Jnana Sukriti no Arjuna. They all have some Sukriti, that means they're pious. And therefore, when the difficulties, when the troubles come, they're able to remember Krishna. They think of Krishna. I don't, I, in India, I heard there was a saying, uh, Dukkha Soni Sukharam. Right? <laughs> Something that, you know, when you're in distress, we'll think of God. And when we have money, we'll think of our money. And so, of course, we should think of God in both situations, both in happiness and distress. When we are happy, we should think also this is the grace of the Lord. I don't deserve to have such happiness. I don't deserve to be so comfortable in my life. It's the grace of the Lord. And we thank Him. And when we're in distress, we should think, you know, I'm a sinful person, I'm a rascal, I deserve it. I probably deserve much more. But the suffering has been minimized by the grace of Lord Krishna. We should think like that. 
we should see everything in a Krishna conscious manner. Just like when you, you may be doing some job and you may cut your finger. And so Srila Prabhupada taught us, he said, you should think that actually if I was not a devotee, I was meant to be stabbed to death. But the, re the karmic reactions have been minimized. I only cut my finger. The suffering is reduced to a very small amount. Or just like you may be involved in some legal proceedings and you have to go to court and the judge is thinking, you know, that maybe they'll fine you a huge amount, a big, um, 10 lakh fine. But when it comes to the court, he said, all right, 100 rupees. You know, a big difference, you know. So it, the suffering is minimized by the grace of Krishna because we're a devotee, because we're engaged in devotional service. So whatever sufferings we're undergoing, they're reduced by the grace of Krishna. Now, we should actually feel like that, that Krishna is protecting. He could give us so much suffering. He could take away everything from us. He could take our very life away, but He's leaving us. He's just giving us a little difficulties. We should see the difficulties in life like that. that Whatever difficulties we are undergoing, it could have been much worse. But they have been minimized by the grace of Krishna. So when we think like that, we will remember Krishna more. The whole purpose is to fix the mind on Krishna, to be Krishna conscious. To see everything as his arrangement. And then it becomes very comfortable for the devotee, that the devotee can tolerate it. As it says, Queen Kunti said, no, we'll no longer see repeated births and deaths. The more we're thinking of Krishna and remembering Krishna and understanding his causeless mercy, the more we become qualified to go back to be with Krishna. So. You may say, well, I'm not so pious. I don't have the Sukriti to think of Krishna. So, we can develop that Sukriti. We can develop it just simply by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. As we said, Srinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. Just by hearing the glories of Lord Krishna that is in itself a pious activity and that gives us that Sukriti which qualifies us to take up Bhakti Yoga, to devote ourselves to Lord Krishna. So we, we want to be able to develop this kind of consciousness. As Queen Kundi says, we could see you again and again, seeing Krishna. Seeing Krishna does not mean that necessarily that we will directly see Krishna, but we can see the hand of Krishna in everything. We can see how he's controlling, how he's arranging everything for us. Just like when we look at the stars at night, we look up in the sky and we see the different stars and we see the the, the moon and how it's moving, how everything is rotating. We should be thinking how Cr Lord Krishna is controlling everything in this material cosmos. It's all going on by his arrangement. He is the, we say, Ishwara Parama Krishna. He is the supreme controller. It's all going on under his direction. And therefore, we should devote ourselves to his service. We should simply think in that way. And this, just by remembering Lord Krishna in that way, 
Then Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, he says, Takva deham punarjanma neiti mamiti sarjuna. That when we give up the body, you never take another birth in this material world. Sometimes that verse is described as the most important verse in the Bhagavad Gita. Chapter 4, text number 9. Janma karma chame divyam evam yoveti takvataha takva. Right. right. If we understand how the birth the janma and the karma, the activities of Lord Krishna, how they are all divyam, how they are all transcendental. Then when we give up this body, we will not have to take birth again in this material world. And if you are thinking, well, I don't mind coming back again in the material world, then we give you our blessings. Right? The one young boy was young man was saying to Prabhupada I don't mind becoming a dog the dogs they have a nice time run around all day and play and fight with each other so Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada said then I give you my blessings become the dog <laughs> you know people are so ignorant they're so foolish they do not realize how much misery there is in the material body. And if you have to take birth, if we have to take birth again, it, it, it can be very difficult. We know from Srimad Bhagavatam, Bharat Maharaj, he was a great soul. He gave up everything. He left his empire. He left his family and everything. And he went off to the Himalayas. And he was living up where the Ganduki is flowing. But somehow he became attached to a deer. He became attached to the young deer, young animal which was up there in the Himalayas. And he completely deviated from his sadhana. And he became so absorbed in thinking of the little deer. He was feeding it and nourishing it and it happened that he met his death one day. He fell off the cliff and next life he became a deer. So that, that kind of attachment is there. You may say, well I don't have any deer, I'm not attached to, but we have other things we're attached to, right? We have motor cars and we have mobile phones, and we have, of course, family members and these things. We're attached to all of these things. And they certainly can also bring us back to the material world. So we, we do want to be very conscious of where is our attachment. We want to be developing the attachment to hearing and chanting Lord Krishna's glories. We don't want to remain attached to the mundane material world. It will be very troublesome for us to have to come back again. And there's no guarantee where you will take your next birth. So Queen Kunti is advising all of us that we can all go back to Godhead if we learn to see Krishna in everything, all the dangers which come, accept them all as the arrangement of Krishna, just to help us to remember him. So we'll go on to the next verse. I just have to go through all these <laughs> pages. Hare Krishna. Okay, number nine. Decreasing the fever of illusion. You can chant. Janma Aishwarya Shruta Shribhir Edamana Madapuman Naivarhati Abhidatum Vai 
ಅಕಿಂಚನ ಗೋಚರ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಮೈ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಯುವರ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ಶಿಪ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಈಸಲಿ ಅಪ್ರೋಚ್ ಬಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬೈ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಸಿ one who is on the path of the material progress trying to improve himself with respectable parentage great opulence high education and bodily beauty cannot approach you with sincere feelings this is a very practical advice here practical, practical message, message given by queen kunti first of all she said that lord krishna you can easily be approached devotional service is not difficult it's not very difficult what we have to do chanting hari krishna reading prabhupada's books like shrimad bhagavatam and bhagavad gita taking krishna prasadam it's not very difficult we don't we don't say oh you have to go and live in the himalayas like bharat maharaj you have to go up there and practice tapasya we don't say you have to do these kind of things and we don't say that you have to study all the vedas and recite everything we don't say that you have to perform all kinds of yagnas and do all kinds of charity we'll leave that up to you but the process of krishna consciousness is quite simple and it's easy to approach lord krishna chanting his holy name and hearing about krishna taking part in the programs coming and chanting and sometimes even dancing it's a joyful process shrila prabhupada would say this is a system of recreation only it's a, it's just like a recreation it's not a great penance or a great difficulty the things we're doing the but they're they're very spiritually powerful however it requires the right attitude in performing these activities and queen kunti mentions here what should be our attitude as we chant and dance and as we serve krishna she says you can easily be approached by those who are materially exhausted in other words we're, we're tired of the endeavor for materialistic life we've been working so long you spent so many hours every day so many years working you get a bit a bit tired of these things after some time at least you should you should be getting tired of doing these things you may say well, i have responsibilities okay you have responsible devotees are not neglectful we understand that we cannot be neglectful we have responsibilities but queen kunti said we we shouldn't be trying to just on, be on the path of material progress we should be exhausted we should be fed up with the endeavor to try to uh progress materially and queen kunti describes what what does what is this material progress she mentions them in the very first line janma aishwarya shruta and shri these four pillars of materialistic life just as we have our pillars of devotional life there are pillars of material life right and and our krishna consciousness the pillars of religion uh the, the uh, satyam sochyam daya tapa 
satyam, truthfulness, socham, cleanliness, daya, mercy, and tapa, austerity. Right? Our, our, what is our austerity? Of course, uh, austerity is no intoxication. We simply say like that. Of course, there are other things implied when we talk about tapa. Tapa, austerity is destroyed by pride. We want to give up pride. In the material world, when people are on the path of material progress, they, they feel proud. Even they have a, a small amount of money there, there's a saying in English, they say, even the pauper, I mean, it's a very poor person, is proud of their penny. A penny is like one cent or something, you know, it's a very insignificant amount. But they're proud, this is mine, I work for this. We feel proud, we feel attached to this wealth. So pride is something which destroys austerity and then also sat, sat truthfulness is destroyed by gambling and also lying propaganda truthfulness is also destroyed when we waste our valuable time instead of practicing Krishna consciousness we waste our time in mundane activities Satyam, sochyam, cleanliness. Cleanliness means internal as well as external. Externally, of course, we like to bathe and change, wash our clothes regularly, but we like to clean ourselves internally also by chanting the holy name that will keep us clean internally. And daya, mercy, Mercy to all living entities. Of course, especially mercy to animals. We don't eat any animal flesh, no meat, fish, and eggs. But daya, the greater mercy, is to distribute Krishna consciousness, to give the holy name and to give the mercy of Krishna to the innocent common people who have no knowledge, trying to awaken them to transcendental consciousness. This is our duty. So these are the four legs of Dharma. The bull, the symbol of religion is Dharma and he stands on four legs. Cleanliness, mercy, austerity and truthfulness. And therefore when we take initiation in Krishna consciousness at that time we vow to follow these four principles. However, as I said, there are principles of material progress and these are mentioned here in this verse. Things like uh, Shri, meaning beauty. You know, people will spend a lot of money on making themselves good looking. And not just women, men also. Especially in countries like USA, I haven't been there for a long time, but I'm told how many men, they will go, they will spend a lot of money to go to try to lose weight, to look slimmer, you know? <laughs> because they tend to overeat and they don't get enough exercise and they put on a lot of weight and they feel uncomfortable. They want to, and they will spend a lot of money to try to lose weight. And they have a lot of slogans telling people, you can do it, <laughs> to encourage people to go on and practice these uh, disciplines to try to make the body a little thinner. And men do these things, and of course women also. Uh, we had one young lady in Singapore, and she was telling me she was working in a, 
a clinic which specializes in in this kind of thing and they get young ladies coming there and they spend a fortune huge amounts of money just to try to lose a little weight when she said the amazing thing is many of the girls they're already thin <laughs> but they want to lose more weight they're already thin but they want they come and they want they spend so much money they want to lose weight or they don't like the shape of their nose or something they want to change it and they'll spend a lot of money to try to get their face changed to look more beautiful to be more attractive sometimes in japan the color of the eyes the japanese want to change the color of their eyes they'll spend a lo lot of money to get make their eyes blue instead of black you know these kind of things in the name of beauty people will make great sacrifices but of course that beauty of the body is so temporary it's not it's not reality the body itself is temporary lord krishna describes the body in the bhagavad gita vachamsi jirnani yatha vihaya Anyani samyati navani dehi. Yes, Lord Krishna is describing that this body is just like a clothing. And just as we change the dress, we, we change also the body. Why are we so worried about the body? It's another kind of intoxication. We become intoxicated with the body we become so proud of to, to be good looking but it's so temporary how long will you be good looking how long will you have the body one of our young ladies in another country she was recently diagnosed with breast cancer and she had to undergo surgery, have a breast removed. Just a young woman, not very old. But disease is there for everyone. We cannot avoid these things. So bodily beauty is one thing which we become very attached to, very concerned with. And of course, we do want to make the best use of the body. We, you know, Prabhupada expected people, the devotees coming, that you, they should look nice, they should dress attractive. But we shouldn't think that that's the goal of life. That is the point. If we're thinking that this is so important, uh, that we will spend so much time and money and effort just to look good, it's not worth it. We should be tired of that. And then, shruta, meaning education. Now, of course, everyone needs some education. But, how long do you need to be taking education? We want to go on studying more and more. It used to be, you know, you could finish high school. That was enough. You could come out and get it. But nowadays, high school, you have to go to university. You have to get a degree from university. But one degree is not enough. You have to go on and do postgraduate. And this is going on one after another. And of course, it's so much time and energy and money. People will spend so much money for education. I know one country where in Malaysia, the, the, the people there, you know, there's not many universities there in Malaysia. And it's difficult for the young people to get a place in the universities which are there in Malaysia. So they often go overseas. 
but for them to go for them to send the children overseas they have to borrow money from the bank and they will have to borrow enough money you could buy a house with all the money they spend for the education and it takes them their whole life to pay the money back is it worth all the trouble we have to question is it really worth all the trouble Srila Prabhupada saw the condition of colleges, universities in the USA and he described them as slaughterhouses. <laughs> he, he had personally seen how they were living, young men and young women living together without any kind of morality. Even someone maybe quite a good person when they're at home living with their parents but once they go in, into that society the, the the education system into these universities and they start mixing with other people they become affected they become also degraded they're pulled into the wheel of material life and sense gratification so education, that kind of education is not really necessary. The real education is hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. And you study the Srimad Bhagavatam, you can learn everything you need to know. All the knowledge is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. You don't need to have to waste all your time and money going to universities and studying all these things. I studied at university myself. I got a degree in engineering. A few months later, I joined Hare Krishna movement. <laughs> I, I worked for a few months only and then I, I met the devotees and you know, I was going to temple and I was going and then they, they said, you can come and stay for the morning program and I would go to morning program and then go to office and work there during the daytime. And after a short time they said to me, give up that job. <laughs> so when they said give up the job, I thought, yeah, why not? There are so many jobs. There are so many other jobs, you know, you can always get jobs. Even you can see all these people came from Ukraine, so many Thousands of people came out of Ukraine. They all went into Europe. They're all getting jobs. They're all working. Maybe not the best jobs, but they've got some work. They're finding work. Jobs are always there. That's not a big problem. So we should be happy to serve Krishna. That's important. Education. We get our education here in the Krishna conscious centers. The modern education system just makes us more attached to the material body. It's Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, like a jewel on the head of a cobra. The jewel on the head of a cobra. A cobra is already poison, a deadly snake. We'll be afraid of it. But when there's a jewel on the head of a cobra, it becomes attractive. We become interested in that snake because it has a jewel. So in the same modern education is like that. We're thinking it's something wonderful and it becomes more dangerous. And then also the other thing, Aishwarya. Money, opulence, we're very concerned to have wealth. People will work very hard, long hours, they will find, they will do all kinds of jobs. Sometimes people will even risk their lives just to make money. We met one man one time because, you know, some often distributing books to people going out into public areas and meeting people. One time we met this one man, his job was, he was working with 
explosions, if, if there's some kind of bomb, if they discover some kind of bomb, he's called for and he has to dismantle the bomb. You know, a very, very dangerous job. At any time, his life, he can lose his life. A little mistake and the whole thing can explode. It's his job to, dis to, to dismantle these kind of bombs which are placed here, which are uh, dangerous for people. And there was this other man we met. His job was climbing on the outside of big buildings, checking their structure to see if, the, if, the, if everything is all right. Because sometimes when they build these big high-rise buildings, sometimes they're they develop cracks, or sometimes the marble which is placed on the outside, sometimes it's not properly fixed, and it may be dangerous, it may fall at any time. So this man, his job was climbing around the outside of the skyscraper buildings, checking the structures to make sure they're safe. Again, a very dangerous kind of job, which in which he's risking his life. And there are many similar jobs. People work in factories sometimes, the pollution, the chemicals, the environment, just the noise. It can be so p damaging, can burst your eardrums if every day you're working in some noisy factory. People will do all of these things. Why? Be they say, no, I have to work, I have to make money. Why? Well, they say, well, I have to eat. This, this is what we, we could call the bread problem, <laughs> right? People in Christianity, people pray to God, give us this day our daily bread. They're praying to God for bread. You see, so they think of God like a father. Just like if you're a father and you have a son or children, they will come to you and they will ask, Father, Dad, I need this, I need that, you have to get me this, right? You have children, the children will be coming with their request, what they want from you. So the same way so in, in Christianity often people think of God like that, like a father. They see our Father, which heart in heaven. Uh, they see God as a Father. And they have a request. They have a list what they want. You know, we want a long life and a home by the sea. Om Jai Jagadish Hare, you know? You know that kind of thing? People. But th this is what Bhagavatam calls Kaitaba Dharma. It is not Sanatana Dharma. It is Kaitava Dharma. It is a cheating religion. You're saying to God, I love you, I love you. But you're thinking, where is the money? Right? It's not pure love. We want to develop pure love. Sanatana Dharma is about pure loving relationships. We see God like our child. We see Lord Krishna as a boy, a young boy. We saw, know him as a cowherd boy. We heard as the son of Nanda Maharaj. He's with the cows in the forest. We see Lord Krishna like that. We don't see him like the father that we're going and praying to. Rather, we see him as a young child. And we're cooking for him. And we will cook nice milk sweets. Just like a mother should cook for their children, they will make nice sandesh and rasgulla and these kind of sweets for their children. So we are cooking like that for Lord Krishna. And we are thinking of him like our child in the mood of Mother Yashoda or Devaki. We are thinking of Krishna as a young boy. Th this is a higher relationship than thinking of him as a father. Because as a father, we just come and beg from him. But as a child, we are giving to God. We are offering everything to him. 
offering our love, which is the most important thing. Lord Krishna, does not, he's not so greedy for our offerings of flowers and fruits. He has many thousands of goddesses of fortune who are all serving him in the kingdom of God, in the Vaikuntha. Do you think he is greedy to get our fruit and our flowers? He has so many goddesses of fortune who are serving him, bringing him wonderful flowers and fruits and offerings of all descriptions. What do we have to offer him? What he wants is our love, our loving devotion. And this is what we're developing by the practice of bhakti yoga. And it begins by our shravanam and kirtan, by our hearing and our chanting. Gradually we can awaken more and more attraction for the service of Lord Krishna. So Aishwarya, wealth is not a very important thing. It's another kind of intoxication. Someone who is very wealthy, they're often very proud of their wealth. They won't like to mix with the ordinary people. Oh no, I'm a rich man. I don't go to these places. I don't go to temple. I'm a rich man, you know. We're, we're intoxicated by the wealth. And uh, in the Christian Bible it says it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God than it is for an elephant to go through the eye of a needle. <laughs> so that, that I even the Christians, they understand that principle, that people having a lot of wealth, often very proud, means they're blinded by it. Just like people when they become drunk, they drink some alcohol and they become intoxicated and they don't know what they're doing, what they're saying, because they're intoxicated. They, it's the effect of the alcohol. So we don't want to be in that condition. And then the first thing which was mentioned was janma, that we should be born in a good family. We want to be born in the nice family. And we want, we, we will think, if someone's born in the Brahmana family, we can think, I am high class, I am Brahmana. And someone else is low class, Malachya, Sudra, Yavana, these things. So people want to have this kind of opulence, the, the good birth. If someone is born in USA, they're thinking, I am American. You know, this pe other people, they're just from some third world country. I'm American. You know, they're intoxicated by their birth. Just because they have, you know, may have bl blonde hair, and blue eyes and golden colored skin and they're thinking I'm American you know? and they think they rule the world they're actually thinking they rule the world they don't know actually they stole America from the Red Indians they're all thieves the people who live in America they came to America and took it from the Red Indians the country actually belonged to the Red Indians. But so many people, invaders, came from Europe and they came in there and they settled there and took control. And the same is true in South America. In South America, you go to South America and all the people come from Spain and Portugal and they have their roots there. The original inhabitants were all killed by the invaders. They're all thieves. They don't recognize who is the actual proprietor. 
So we have to understand everything actually belongs to God. We are not the proprietor. It's all His. And whatever we have, it is given to us by His grace. Just like one time Srila Prabhupada was in Mayapur, so this one life member came and he got the opportunity to meet Srila Prabhupada. So Srila Prabhupada was asking him, what is your business? What business are you doing? Tell me. So the man said, oh Swamiji, I have a glass factory. So Prabhupada said, oh, how do you make the glass? And the man says, well, we get the sand and we melt the sand and it, you know, make it into glass. And Prabhupada then said, uh-huh, and where do you get the sand from? And the man was saying, well, you know, he said, I have land there and have land, we dig it from the ground, we have sand mines. And, yeah. and Prabhupada said, and whose sand is it? And the man was saying, well, I have the land there, you know, it's my, we have a mine and we dig out this. But Prabhupada said, yes, but whose sand is it, you know? <laughs> and then finally the man understood and he said, oh yes, well, Swamiji, yeah, everything belongs to God, right? And Prabhupada then said, ah, oh, everything belongs to God. And then he turned to one of the devotees who was there and he said, did you hear what he said? And the devotee said, yes, Prabhupada, he's a thief. <laughs> and Prabhupada looked at the man and said, he says, you're a thief. <laughs> and, the, and the man said, oh, well, Swamiji, <laughs> everything belongs to God. So this we have to understand. We are born with nothing and we live with nothing. But in the course of our time here in this world, we are claiming ourselves to be the proprietor. Actually, everything belongs to God and it's meant to be used for His service. How to serve, how to use it in the service of God? That you have to learn from the devotees. And by reading books like Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, you can learn how to use everything in the proper way. We should not become attached to all of these material things. They're just another bondage to us. The good birth, the education, the beauty and the opulence, all of these things are finished with the body. They're very temporary. Any moment you can have heart attack. Can you take your bank balance with you at the time of death? It's all left. You have to leave everything. So we have to understand the nature of this human life. That this life is just part of our journey. We're all on the, the journey and our journey our, the destination we want to go to, we want to go back to the kingdom of God, to our real home in the spiritual world. We don't want to waste our time loitering in this material world. Just like if you see some rich man's son, but he may be loitering in the street. Sometimes it happens. The father is very rich and he has a son and the son just decides he wants to go alone. He wants to leave the father and he goes out from the home and he is just wandering, loitering in the street. He has no proper food, he's dirty, he's not got proper clothing on, but he's a rich man's son and he's living in such a bad condition. So the father will always be anxious to bring the son back to him. He will be thinking, how to bring my son home? In the same way, Lord Krishna sees all of us. 
we are all rebellious living entities. We are also children of God, right? In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Aham bija pradapita, right? You may say, no, I am father, but who is your father? We all have a father, and the Supreme Father is Lord Sri Krishna. He said, I am the father of all living entities, and our father cares for us, and he wants us all to go back to him. So he's making arrangements to bring us out from this material world. He sends his devotees, like Jaipataka Swami Maharaj and Srila Prabhupada, wonderful devotees, they come to this world to lead us and to enlighten us out of our ignorance. We are born in ignorance, but the spiritual teachers come and they open our eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. We want to understand the proper use of the human life. It is very rare to get the human birth. So many species of life are there. 84 lakh species. Only 4 lakh a human species. So we're fortunate. And we're even more fortunate because among all the human species, only a few living entities have the association with the devotees and the opportunity to cultivate God consciousness. So it's very special, very rare opportunity. We don't want to waste this opportunity. We want to take full advantage and to prepare ourselves to get out from this world. It takes some practice. We have to practice. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna was describing yoga to Arjuna. He was describing about meditation and controlling the mind. And Arjuna said to Krishna, he said, Oh, I can't do this, Krishna. He said, Chanchalahimana Krishna. My mind is so restless, more difficult to control than the wind. How can I do this? But Lord Krishna said, yes, I know it's difficult, but by practice and detachment you can do it. Abhyasena tu kontiya vairagriyena chagriyate. Abhyas, practice. We have to practice every day bringing the mind back to Krishna, chanting the holy name, chanting that same mantra. But that mantra itself is, it's chintamani. It can fulfill all of our spir spiritual desires. It's a holy name of Krishna. It's a prayer and it's the answer to our prayers also. It's a prayer. We are praying to we're praying to the Lord. Please engage me in your service. And by chanting, we are being engaged in Krishna's service. It's an opportunity for service. The the holy name is described in the script Nam Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha. Purna Shuddha Nitya Mukto Binat Nam Nama Namano. That the holy name is a wish fulfilling touchstone. It can fulfill all of our spiritual desires. We have to know what to desire for. If you simply desire for Janma, Aishwarya, Shruta, and Sri, that's not very intelligent because these things are very temporary. They're finished with the body. But if you get some spiritual benefit, that is eternal, and that will stay with you. The next life, you can go on and continue. Whatever progress we make in this life, you never lose it. A little advancement made can save us from the greatest 
from from the greatest danger the danger being that now we have the human body but in the next life we may not have that opportunity if we lose this human form of life then it's a great loss if we go down into the lower species then it takes so much time to come back again to the human form of life and we may not get the opportunity to have association with people in spiritual practice it's very rare we want to understand how special this Krishna consciousness movement is we want to take full advantage make the best use of every moment Srila Prabhupada would cite Chanakya Pandit Chanakya Pandit was a, a moralist of course in India he was not so much devotee but what he spoke was very practical and he said that time is the most valuable thing every moment lost you can never buy it back you so we we want to make best use of time and it's interesting you know uh, bec in China they also say like that they have the sim similar saying they say you can buy an inch of gold but you cannot buy one inch of time so time is the most valuable thing we have to use it very carefully make the best use of this time and we are thinking you yeah. know oh use my time how do we use the time eating sleeping mating defending we watch television we do a, we, we go for drives go and drive in the car go around but we waste a lot of time the valuable time what we need to do is take time to remember Krishna to bring the mind back to the real goal of life the goal of life is described by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he said Prem Punarto Mohan the goal of life is to develop Prema love of God that is the greatest wealth that is the, the greatest treasure you want wealth you want th there's the greatest wealth in developing your love for God we want to make that endeavor we don't want to waste our time in something futile you want to make a lot of money in the material world every year the money devalues the cost of living increases every year you go to India you know I, when I first went to India the, the, the currency it was 8 rupees to 1 US dollar now today it's 80 or more right to 1 dollar so the value of money is so different what you could do with 1 rupee in India 50 years ago and what you can do with 1 rupee today is vastly different the money the value of money it, it's so temporary doesn't make any real sense to endeavor so much of course we have to live but the goal of life we have to remember what is the real goal of life that we want to be sure of our destiny at the end of this life that we don't come back that we don't lose that at least we can get a better birth we want to improve ourselves just like people they will like to m make money and they think one day I will retire and I will stop working and I have money saved up I will take care of myself but we should also think about the next life we have to go on we have to give up this life and we'll take birth again where are you going to take the next birth we have to prepare for that and that's why we have to chant the maha mantra it's why we have to come and worship Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 500 years ago he sent 
Lord Nityananda and Haridas Thakur, he asked the two of them to go everywhere. And it's f a famous statement in the Chaitanya Bhagavat. It, in Bengali language it said, Suno Suno Nityananda, Suno Haridas, Priti Gari Gari Gya, Koro E Bhiksha, Bolo Krishna, Bajo Krishna, Koro Krishna Shiksha. Lord Chaitanya was telling Haridas and Lord Nityananda, he said, I want you to go to every door, go to every home and knock on the door and then fall at the feet of when they open the door, you fall at their feet and you beg them, worship Krishna, chant the names of Krishna and read the books about Krishna. And in this way, Lord Nityananda and Haridas, they went. And one day even, they delivered Jagai and Madhai, who were the most fallen, the biggest debauchees. And they were drunkards and everything, the very fallen people. But Lord Nityananda and Haridas, they gave mercy to Jagai and Madhai. So... It's important for all of us to understand the importance of these activities. Chanting the holy name, worshipping Krishna, and reading the books about Krishna. And this way our life will have some meaning. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Are there any questions? Yes, question is at the back. Someone has a hand up. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Dharmat Pranam. Mm -hmm. Prabhu, uh, Guruji, you told there are 84 lakhs species. We agree. You added 4,000 human species. In medicine, we tell there is only Homo sapien, one person. That is a human race. What do you understand from 4,000 human species? You mean to say the Americans, the Africans are counted as different species? Or yes. Or from where do you count 4,000 species of humans? Well, there are, just like on this planet, we see there are different races. You know, there's the, the Oriental people. There's the Chinese race. You know, you can recognize the Chinese, the Han people from China. There's Africans, you can see the, you can see the Icelandic people, the, the Scandinavian people. Yeah, there, there's some, the Caucasian, we talk about Caucasian, I'm Caucasian, my body. You know, different races are there on this planet, but there's also, in other places, there's also human species, not only on this planet. Yes. Well, the, they are different. You can see different characteristics in the different races. There are di there is vast difference. You can identify different races. You can't say they're all exactly the same. They don't look exactly the same. And they have different characteristics also, different natures. Some people by nature are very lazy. And other people by nature are very warlike. There are di big differences in these different races. Mm -hmm. But we, we do say atato brahma jignasa, meaning now you have the human life. We can inquire what is the difference between matter and spirit. So. We don't make distinction when it comes to distributing Krishna consciousness. We give Krishna consciousness everywhere, to everyone. And even we are willing to help even the animals to become Krishna conscious. The, 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 a devotee will give mercy even to the dogs and so on. We will help. If we see they have an interest, we will certainly help them to become God conscious. So we have many devotees from all parts of the world. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Sukadeva Goswami describes, is a Kirita Hunandra Palinda Pukasha, Abira, Shumba, Yavana, 
Kashadaya, Yenye Tapapa, Yeda Pashraya Shraya, Sujanti Tasmai Prabhavishnave Namaha. It's a famous statement from Srimad Bhagavatam. Sukadeva Goswami is describing different races who are all addicted to sinful acts. And he mentions, first of all, he said, Kirita. You know who Kirita? Kirita means African. And the very last one, Kasha. Kasha means Chinese. Kirita, Hunandra, Hans, European. Belinda, Pukya, it talk different uh, Turks, uh, Greeks, you know, and different parts of India also, different races are there. You've got mountain people, Aborigine people, tribal people. Oh. The, they can all become devotees by the mercy of the devotee. If they get the mercy of a devotee, they can also be changed. They can all become Krishna conscious. Hmm? Yes. Hare so, Krishna Maharaj. Yes. I'm here Maharaj. Okay. Uh, Maharaj, as you said, and almost every one of us know that we come empty handed and we go em uh, we don't we leave everything here. But still our desire to accumulate and work hard and uh, th that th this uh, this propensity does not die so easily. Sorry? The what? Uh, what I say that uh, we know, and as you said, Maharaj, in the class. Yeah, we come empty-handed. Uh, we go empty-handed. Empty-handed, but still our desire, on, in spite of knowing this is the f this is the truth and this is the fact, is not going to change for anyone. But still, our propensity to accumulate more wealth, more and more wealth, and try to m make more adjustment here, this propensity does not die. So how how do you go about it, Maharaj? Well, it can die if you want to. You want to hold on to it. So you have to bear with it. If you're going to hold on to it, it's your problem. We're trying to help you to give up. We want you to be aware of what's happening. If you're going to hold on to these things, what is the result? What's going to give you? What's going to bring you? Just simply troubles. You cannot blame anybody. You can't say to Yamaraj, Oh, nobody told me. I didn't know. No, Yamarash will say, no, they told you, look, you were there in the class, you heard everything. <laughs> it's like the, 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 the disciple was saying to the guru, how can I get rid of my material desires? Guru said, you just wait, I will tell you. So that afternoon he heard the guru calling out, let me go, let me go. So the devotee, the, the disciple came running and he saw his guru was holding a tree. He was holding a tree, he was shouting, help, let me go, let me go. So he said to, the, 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 the disciple said to the guru, he said, Guruji, what's wrong? He said, I want to let go, I want to get free. And, and the, 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 the guru then said, no, the, the disciple said to the guru, he said, you're holding the tree. So the guru turned and said, yes, you see, you are holding the attachments. You're asking me how to let go of the attachments. You yourself have to let go. <laughs> and how do you let go? We, we, we make it very easy for you to let go. We give you an attachment to Krishna. Instead of being attached to all the money, being, a, you know, you're trying for so many lifetimes trying to make money, you know. It's, been, it's not a new thing. It's been going on life after life. We've been trying. According to our karma, you get the results. Everyone's trying to make money, you know. Do they all get it? You get according to your karma. It's going to come without worrying about it. Tashiva heto prayateta kovido. Srimad Bhagavatam says, everything will come to you in course of time according to your destiny. It's not just by hard work that you're going to get money, but according to your karma, your past. Some people will make money easily and others will make it with great difficulty. We should understand what is the real goal of life. It's not just simply getting the money. That attachment to the money, that will be there, but you can be purified of that by hearing properly. Just like we hear, it's wrong to steal. 
Now, you hear it's wrong to steal. If you're intelligent, you will not steal. But if we think, I will steal and get, I'll get away with it, and then when you get caught, and you're punished and you're put in the jail, then you will think again. Oh, I don't know, if, should I steal again? Maybe I have to go to jail again. Maybe I won't steal again. But some people, they go to jail, they come out, and they steal again. And again they go to jail. And again they're suffering. But the intelligent person, he heard in the beginning that it's wrong to steal, and he did not steal. So the same way we hear that we don't need to endeavor, we don't need to spend our whole life just endeavoring to get a bigger bank balance, to have more digits in our bank account. We need to endeavor to awaken our consciousness to come to a higher consciousness of life than just simply the digits in the bank. Right? You understand? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you again Maharaj very much. Maharaj, I have a question. Like, um, there are these intellectuals who are very intelligent, who always um, look for logic in everything. And uh, so they also look for logic in God. Uh, so they want to know how Krishna is. So it's very difficult for them to believe that Krishna is God. They will read Bhagavad Gita and all, but to believe that Krishna is God. You said Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went from door to door knocking and gave Krishna. So uh, they transform Jagai Madai also. But then these intellectuals who are pious, but very difficult, they, they are also seekers. They want to know the truth, spiritual, they are searching uh, for answers. But uh, for them to believe that Krishna or Rama is God is so difficult. So how actually uh, to convince such people, what, to be, what is to be told to them that, you know, that... Krishna is God because uh, 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 spirituality begins with uh, faith in the words of the scriptures. But uh, they say, how can we put blind faith in the words of scriptures? So yes, okay. So logically, we have to explain that there must be a controller behind this world. There has to be a creator. There's a creation we can see in this world, you see a motor car, who made it? Oh, m men made it. There's this building, who made the building? Men built the building, they put up the building. There's a cake, who made the cake? Oh, people baked the cake, they made it. So we look at the universe, we see the sky and the stars and the planets, who made it? There must be some beings behind it, some intelligent beings. Just like you look at a city, there must be some intelligent people behind the city. Here in Bahrain, small island in the middle of the... Uh, did, where do they get the food for so many people? There are some intelligent people organizing and arranging everything to bring in the food, to arrange all the water, to arrange all the electricity. It takes intelligent beings to organize all this. So the same way behind the universe, there is a greater intelligence to organize and arrange and supply the needs of all living entities. There must be some intelligent beings there try to understand who are these intelligent beings. So like that, we have to impress upon them that there is intelligence there, and there is so much design in the material world. We look at the design of the body, our different, the bodies of all different living entities, how they're designed, the eye, the different muscles in the eye, they're so, it's so complex. The doctors are still trying to understand these things. The doctors are trying to understand 
where does the energy for the heart come from? Because they do not understand the existence of the soul. But there's a soul, we know, there's a soul in this body which is providing the energy for the life in this body. And so we, we give so many examples to people to help them to understand that there is design in this world. A design means there are people, intelligent beings who design these things. Much greater, on a much higher level than we are. There are intelligent beings. And above all of them, there's one supreme being. Just like you have a government. You have one person who's the head of the government. And so in the same way, there's a, gov there's a universal government. We would call them devas or demigods. And above all of them, there is one supreme deva, Lord Sri Krishna. So like that we try to explain to people. Does that sound reasonable? says uh, idiot, there are many idiots who go behind gods and scriptures so this is the way and uh, these people believe what he says and they say that how how do you know scriptures are authentic who told you that scriptures are authentic so it's so difficult for well I'm not presenting any there. scripture I never mentioned any scripture I just spoke logic you were asking for logic and I spoke about logic that when we look at the world in a logical manner, we understand there must be some intelligent beings behind the creation and try to identify them. Uh, yeah, Maharaj, but to come to per particularly to Krishna is a problem. Like, so uh, how can we say Krishna or Rama? Well, first of all, understand that there is some intelligent being behind everything, right? First of all, bring them to that platform, that there is some divine intelligent beings behind the creation. Now, who, what is the identity of that person? Well, just like the, even the, the demigods, they're often puzzled themselves. They sent Brigha Muni to test Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, right? Brigha Muni tested Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva and he f found Lord Vishnu was uh, the most... Uh, the, the most w situated in the mode of goodness. So you saw the supreme position of Lord Vishnu. So that's a start. If you get them to understand the position of Lord Vishnu, and then you can gradually you can come to Krishna. Yes, Krishna is not so easy for people to understand. We know that. Even the demigods have difficulty to understand it. And if you listen to Sadhguru, then you'll find it very hard to understand. It's not going to help you. He's got his own brain problems, right? He had some brain surgery or something. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. So, we will chant one time Hare Krishna to thank His Holiness Bhakti Vigni Vinasak Swami Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Hare. So this session will continue tomorrow also evening, so please come on time. At, at we are seeing people, uh, devotees are coming very late, not on time in the class, which is not a good practice. You come on time and get advantage of full class. Hare Krishna. Today evening Bhoga has been sponsored by His Grace R. Muniya Chandran Prabhu, Krishna Mala Mataji and Bhakti Monisa Meena. Hare Bol. Also by one devotee in the name of His Holiness Jayapataka Swami Guru Maharaj. So please chant one Hare Krishna for today's sponsor. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare. Hare. 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे प्लीज मूव देर टेम्पल हॉर फॉर नर्सिंग बंदना